I'm Merlin and I am the Collider Artist in Residence for the month of August. And today I'm going to go kind of in depth on what I use to make glitch art. At the most basic level, um, you need some kind of uh, computer. It doesn't have to be anything new. Um, it doesn't have to be anything expensive. Certainly, if you have a nicer tool, it can make it easier, but it's definitely not necessary. And I have used very old computers from uh, like 10 plus years before I made the work um, using entirely free tools. Um, so you don't need a lot of money to get started in this. From there, um, a good image editor if that's Photoshop or something like Affinity Photo, that's great. If not, GIMP is free and GIMP will get the job done and it gets it done really well. Another tool um, is Audacity, which is a free audio editing software. You would be amazed at the amount of work that I've created in that and it, you can't tell the difference. And then from there, just a text editor, which is free and included on any computer you buy. And then from there, um, having things like external hard drives or having a nice camera, um, it definitely can help um, in getting your initial, um, I guess, images or videos that you're going to glitch. Um, but again, even something like a smartphone also does the trick as well. Or you can even just use images that you found online. You take these um, images that you um, have taken or found, or videos, you turn them into a file format that is easy to glitch. Um, usually that's going to be a RAW file, a TIFF, or a JPEG. There are other ones you can use, but it's not it's not nearly as easy and not as recommended. Um, and they don't usually give you as good of results. From there, you can open the image in either um, something like Audacity um, or your image editor, and then intentionally break the image. What you're doing when you break an image uh, is you're taking the file and you are altering the actual code from the file um, in such a way that it is changing the image and the underlying structure of the image in a way that computers don't necessarily like. Typically, I will use um, Audacity or a text editor. Um, there are other tools out there, but those are my two preferred. So you have to import it as raw data, confuse Audacity into thinking that the image is an actual WAV file. And then after you have confused it, you can apply any audio editing techniques that you would like. So you do have to export it as raw data. And then after you've exported it as raw data, you then have to um, change the file extension to be your original one. So if that was a JPEG, you change it back to JPEG instead of um, .raw. So the um, main ways that an image will get distorted, it's going to depend greatly on the actual effects that you use, and every image is going to be a little bit different. So it might be um, if all you're using is something like the Wawa effect or using like a limiter, it might only change the colors a little bit. Um, it'll change them in drastically different ways. I think one, um, I did a self portrait and I did, I think it was Wawa effect. Um, and it came out these like fluorescent greens and pinks. And then you can also, if you, chop it up and move parts around, um, that will actually move parts of the image around. And kind of the, the main joys of glitch art is that 
while you can kind of sort of predict the results um, after you've done it a while, you will find that it's very uh, um, unpredictable, which is kind of the joys of it. Come to my workshop on uh, August 26th to find out more about how to make your own glitch art where I spill all of my secrets uh, using Audacity and a text editor.